and views with Elliot Rodriguez on the air and on the web at cbsmiami.com. Welcome back. If you've spent much time on the waters of South Florida, you've probably seen them. The Miami-Dade fireboats. Their crews rescue boaters in distress and help put out fires both at sea and along the coast. But now the fireboats could fall victim to county budget cuts. Mayor Carlos Jimenez has proposed eliminating them, but supporters of the boats say that's a cut that could actually cost lives. CBS 4 Stephanie Helberg explains why. When we went to, we were saying goodbye to each other. It was, it was a very horrifying experience. For 18 hours, Chris Robbins and Pam Sykes clung to a buoy in the ocean, its barnacles slicing them off. And the jellyfish, I mean, the, the, we could feel them. Every five seconds, we were getting bit. A terrifying ordeal for the couple last week after their boat capsized. And it took about 10 seconds before the boat was completely underneath the water. For hours, the waves battered them, their fears of sharks and other predators taking over their psyches. We were horrified. Ultimately, help did come. Some boaters spotted them and called the Miami-Dade fireboat. Thank God they were around them um, because she was going into major shock. Uh, dehydration and hypothermia. Next time, that boat might not be there. Mayor Carlos Jimenez wants to cut at least one of only two fire boats. But we do have a $400 million deficit. Uh, we're looking at a different way of staffing that, that boat. That boat, in my opinion, is being staffed in a wasteful manner. It would save the county two and a half million dollars, but cut back on some of the only paramedics and firefighters patrolling the water. How could a former fire chief propose cutting such a critical need? Well, because the, the former fire chief understands what, what criticality is. We don't have a paramedic or a cop on every corner. Uh, you do the best of what you have. There's not enough people out there as it is. No. It's absurd, the thought of losing fireball water. You know, you can't put a price on people's lives. Tiffany Helbert, CBS 4 News. Joining me this morning is Jack Garcia, representing a group of Miami-Dade residents that support the fireboat program. He's a Miami-Dade firefighter who is here on his off-duty time. And Jack, thank you very much. You're uh, again, you're a firefighter, but you're not in, here in, this, in that capacity. You're, no. you're here because you're concerned that lives would be lost if South Florida lost these boats. Do you really believe that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've been a frontline firefighter for over 30 years. And I've worked rescue trucks, I've worked fire trucks, and for the last six years since the inception of the fireboat program, I've been on the water protecting the citizens of Dade County with the, uh, with, the, with the crews that work very hard, very diligently. We've built one of the premier fireboat programs, fire rescue programs, because we are a floating fire truck and fire rescue, rescue truck um, on the water. And uh, whether it's fire or anything that happens on land, happens on the water, and it happens quite often. Well, let, let's talk. Let's talk dollars and cents here. Mm -hmm. How much does it cost to operate these two fire boats for Miami-Dade County? Well, the numbers that I've heard, and I'm not in that end of it, okay. that, that keep getting thrown out, is that they're about two and a half million or two million dollars a piece. But all said and done, we have 125 fire trucks and rescue trucks on land. The same cost of one fire boat is what a fire truck or rescue truck costs. And and way, tell me about the way the fire boats are manned right now. You report for duty and you're out there patrolling in your boat. Is that the way it works? Absolutely. We, you know, Miami Dade Fire Department is one of the best fire departments in the country. And our level of service to the citizens is second to none. We're accredited. The men and women of our department, every day in and out, provide a level that's un unequal. We man the fire boats the same way that they man one land ALS, advanced life support fire truck. So we have paramedics on board and two, at a minimum of two paramedics on board and we have divers and uh, we're capable of fighting fires or acting like a rescue truck. How many calls do you respond to on an average day? Um, it, it averages and the thing is, is the fire service, you can't really gauge it by the number of calls because we're like an insurance policy, we're like a fire extinguisher. Weekends are our busiest times, but it can happen at any time. Just last night I was on duty, we had a boat fire that the Coast Guard called us on in the middle of the night, two miles offshore, 
and we also had a woman that jumped in government cut in the middle of the night, and yesterday was a, a Wednesday. How surprised were you when um, Mayor Jimenez, himself a former firefighter, a former fire chief, was the one that said, we need to save money, and this is where we can save it, by cutting these fire boats? I, I just felt like maybe he wasn't informed. I mean, he's a former fire chief. He, and he hasn't been a fire chief for 20 years. He was in the 90s. He was the uh, director of the city fire department. And he did a fine job. But this is 2011. It's a different world. It's a different county. It's it's uh, it's a whole different ball game. What about uh, the option of having those boats there ready, and if they're needed, firefighters would respond and go out on the boat? It, Does that make any sense to you? Yeah, it's absolutely essential because one of the things that the crew that we do out there as crews is. We monitor channel 16 on the VHF radio, which is the emergency marine band, okay? The 911 center doesn't monitor that. And when you're out on a boat, your cell phone doesn't work because you're out of, out of uh, contact. And we monitor like, like a uh, heart attack or organ donor victim waiting for a phone call. 24 hours a day, we're listening. And you can ask every major uh, agency on the water how well and how fast we respond to these calls. It would not work if the boats were docked somewhere and the firefighters responded to the boat and then responded to the emergency? It would delay immensely. Uh, I mean, we're covering an area of 700 square miles of Dade County water with two units, where on land we have a 125 units covering. Uh, and you can do the math. It's just an incredible amount of area to cover with two units, and and and, and we run over 1,700 calls. And I'm sure you've heard the argument that well, this is wonderful that we have the service, but this is a luxury uh, because we're in tight economic times, and we need firefighters to respond to fires on land, and the people who are out there on boats, you know, they're, that's a risk that they're taking. Uh, I understand that, but it goes beyond that, and I understand we're in tough economic times. But well, we're a frontline unit, no different than the fire truck in your neighborhood. We've got uh, over 68,000 boaters. That's only one small segment of what we serve. We have coastal properties that I think in one of your segments you saw uh, a castle fire that we responded to. There was also Bogey's Barn fire. And we're a traditional fire service that every major fire department in the, in the country has had for years and years. Well, we're running out of time, but basically I understand that there may be some room for negotiation here, that there may be a compromise reached. Uh, um, you know, I'm just hoping that our elected leaders get educated on what we do and what the benefit to the community is and what the detriment will be if they take these out, you know, and, and then the count of uh, loss of property and life, it will happen. Okay. Jack Garcia, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah. If you're still ahead, chemo controversy, why some breast cancer therapy is covered by insurance while others are not and how breast cancer survivors are fighting back.